you know, I, I, it, it delights me the delicacy of which the, the, the little features came out at. Um, you know, in the bigger picture, I'd have to say things like Unanimous, um, Hell's Kitchen. The reality shows, in a way, have been most satisfying to me because the, the shows that I do in reality are not shows like in a house or with a camera shooting on a street. They're an environment that is clearly not real, but it has to be real. So unlike a sitcom where you know it's fake um, or, you know, these episodic shows, which they, they try to be fairly realistic too, um, but these are environments where it's not an actor uh, that's pretending. It's not a, you know, situation where you can yell, cut, let's take that shot again. You have one shot at really getting the environment right, and then it sits there for a month while everybody interacts with it. And, and that, to me, I think is really the ultimate in terms of design. You know, is it good enough to be believable by anybody walking in? You know, we have people who go to Hell's Kitchen and they, they leave a tip. You know, they get out of there, they, they fly into L.A., they ask the cabbie to bring them to Hell's Kitchen because they want dinner. They don't realize it's not a real place. To me, that's success. Yeah. So if you were putting a crew together to go do um, something like, say, endurance, um, what would you look for? What, what kind of characteristics do you want in the people that are around you? Well, I, I mean, I think, I think number one is uh, dedication. None of these shows are easy. You know, it doesn't matter really whether it's a sitcom or reality. Uh, they all take a lot of hard work. And... Um, you know, you want, you want the people that will not stop at, oh, the, you know, the, there's one roll of fabric left in town. You want people who think beyond, uh, you know, this is the only answer or this is the one solution. I don't have anything else. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it comes back to working hard. It's, it's not genius 99% of the time. It's just working at it, working at it, working at it. You know, and... I can't tell you how many fabric samples we've gone, looked at for, like, Hell's Kitchen until we find the right one. And I just keep sending my people out until they find one that we all like, most importantly, that I like. And, um, and they go do it with a smile because they know it matters. You know, they know in the end all the pieces have to come together to, to bring it to that level. And that show has four Emmy nominations so far, um, you know, to... And, and which is, you know, there's no reality show that gets Emmy nominations for design. That's the only one. And it's because we deal with it that way to the littlest detail. And those are the people that you want to surround yourself with. So when you're crewing up a little show, you know, hopefully you can hire a friend, but make sure the guy is lifting his weight. Otherwise, hire somebody else. Or if you get in a situation where you're in a show and, you know, there's a personality that isn't the right fit for it. Save yourself a lot of agony. Save that person a lot of agony. Say, look, I'm going to replace you. You don't need to be unhappy here. We don't, you know, we need, we need you at 100%. Let's make this split now and work together another day. Nothing wrong with that. But save yourself the trouble. Make the changes when you need to. You can do it in a nice way and, and work together with that person where they're at their strength. And I try to use my people where their strengths are. I have one art director that I design with because he has a great design sense. He understands what I'm thinking. I've got another art director that I use to run the shows, Kevin, on Hell's Kitchen. I think you guys might have met him. Um, because he's really great at, at all the functioning pieces on stage. Robert, on the other hand, who designs me, that's not his forte. Use people to their strengths. They're going to be a lot happier. You're going to be a lot happier. You'll have a better product. Uh, when you design sets that have a live audience, how much different is the process? Um, you know, it's not a lot different um, because the primary action is still what's being televised. But what you suddenly have to contend with then is, you know, do you have audience shots? Do you have, you know, and it also depends on how you incorporate the audience. Some shows, you want the audience like, uh, uh, you know, Millionaire, where the audience is wrapped around the set. 
Well, then it becomes a really big issue. But there's a handful of challenges with that. You know, some folks in the audience fall asleep in the middle of the show. You don't want that behind your host on camera. So you, you try to work it in in a, in a strategy where you can get them when you want them, but not in a way that, that, that damages a key shot. Um, and, uh, you know, right now it's all the rage to put audience all the way around a set, but there's, there's a lot of issues to it. It's expensive because you got to buy that audience most of the time. You still got to light that audience. Um, and, you know, if they're asleep, it, it's, um, it's a bad look. So yeah, there's techniques for it, but the core of the set more or less stays the same. You were starting on something, Kent? Yeah, because I actually never heard the story. How did you happen to fall into art direction? I mean, people spend their entire lives trying to be production designers in this silly business. How did you happen to fall into doing it? The, uh, you, I've never told you how I met Bruce. I don't think so. Um, you know, this business is funny. When somebody wants you, they want you instantly. They want you for a project tomorrow. We work at a very fast pace. Um, and so you have to be ready and available. You can't go, well, you know, I'm surfing today. I'm going to, I can do it Monday. They want you, they want you now. And when I first got the call from uh, Bruce Ryan, it was a Wednesday, and I, had, I was working in an architecture firm, and he needed a model for some TV show. And I said, look, I can't, I can't do it, uh, you know, tomorrow. I can do it Saturday, Sunday, over the weekend. And he s promptly said, well, there's another guy I've worked with before. I already know what kind of work I'll get from him. He's also available only on the weekend. I'll just go with the guy I know. Thank you. Goodbye. But send me, you know, here's my fax number. Fax me your resume. Six months later, I get a call, and it's Bruce again. Um, Fortunately, that very day, the firm that I was working with said, look, John, take two weeks off. Um, we've got a bunch of signed contracts. You're done with the elementary school in Van Nuys. Um, take some time off. Phone rings, and it's Bruce. Are you available? Can you start tomorrow? Well, yeah, sure I can. And I went in, and I, I did a model, and the guy realized that, that uh, coming from architecture to TV, the model making was really quite easy. Uh, and he said, you want to do a show? And that was it. Uh, but again, if I hadn't literally been told, hey, take two weeks off, I probably would have said, ah, I can do it for you on the weekend, and it would never have happened. When those opportunities come, you've got to take them quickly. You can't sit around thinking about it. Maybe it's the right one. Maybe it's not the right one. But you don't know until you say yes to it. That's the story. It would have been that easy not to be in this business. But, I, I, you know, and looking back, I, it's like I, I, I couldn't stand doing architecture for the last 17 years, and I know I wouldn't have been driving to work laughing out loud. You, know. you wouldn't be living in that house you're living in either. Well, that's probably true. They don't see architects particularly But um, anyway, it's, it, you know, it's a terrific career. TV, for all the, the little stigma it has, has so much more variety than you could do. Uh, in just about any other medium. I, in the last 17 years, I've designed, I don't know, a couple of hundred shows. In, within those shows, probably several thousand sets. Um, you don't get that in movies. You can't do that in architecture. Uh, and you don't have to deal with a you know, building department. Nobody cares too much about it as long as they like the look. And you can try a new thing every two weeks. I'm on my fourth and fifth show of the year, and it's the middle of April. And the good news about that, too, is that sometimes you get on a show that you really can't stand, like Dance Your Ass Off. The, the, the producers were just awful. Two months, and you're done with it. Beats working on a movie for two years and with people you don't like. So. so you did shows already and it's only April. How often does a design get repeated? If you're doing so many, you've got to, something's got to come up more than once. Um, well, they don't, they don't sit on a shelf and, and, and I pull them off. I mean, fortunately, each show, each show does have different requirements. And again, the first thing I look for is what is this show about? 
I will never use this set for any other show. You know, that background was derived out of the, the, the show's theme. You know, Hell's Kitchen, Hell's Kitchen is, is a character now. It's a place. It has a design language that stays somewhat consistent, and that's more in tone because the plan changes constantly. The, the finishes, you know, change. But the sort of warm woods and whatnot tone, um, that stays consistent. Um, I'd like to think that although I use a set of tools, the texture, the backlight, the built-in lighting, the layers, I'd like to think that every one of those sets is different. There are guys that have a really clear design language and they're hired again and again and again because they have a really strong visual. It's a different way of marketing yourself if you've got something that people love and it's hot. I find it much more interesting to try to create each show for what it should be. We looked at all your shows, pictures from all of them. Is there any concept or designs that would follow through to all of them? Well, like I said, what would follow through are the tools that I use, the, the, you know, the, the, the techniques. And hopefully, I mean, you know, we can go backwards. You know, obviously, that's not like the last one, nor this. But let's go to a, a similar show. Okay. Another game show. Same techniques, not at all like the previous one. Extremely not at all like the previous one. <laughs> but it employs the same, you know, thought process. You know, again, same tools doesn't look like the last one either. You know, so, you, you know, it's not wrong to repeat. I mean, I'm not inventing, reinventing the wheel with any one of these sets. These are all forms and shapes that people have used for, you know, hundreds of years. It's just how you put them together. You had a question? Um, I was wondering, is there, like, what location do you normally shoot at for television? Burbank, character, Hollywood? Um, you know, I mean, most of the studios are in and around Hollywood. Um, it somewhat depends on the type of show. If you're doing, you know, music and award shows, you're going to more often than not be at one of the real theaters at, you know, the Shrine, at the Kodak. We've been at the Pasadena Civic, Santa Monica Civic. Um, <clears throat> if you're doing stage shows, most of the stages are in and around Hollywood. There are, are now more stages on the west side and they're downtown L.A., uh, reality shows, it can be any place. I mean, I've done endurance in Fiji, Mexico, Hawaii, the Sierra Nevadas. You know, it all depends on what's right for the show. But most of the time, what determines it is how close can you get a stage to the executive producer's house. So he's less travel time. I'm not kidding about that. It's actually a really big factor, or close to their office. In fact, um, the MasterChef set was sort of South Central because that was the only place we could find a warehouse that worked for it last year. But the head of Fox did not feel comfortable driving to South Central Los Angeles, so we were forced to find a new location for it. And we found one in Marina del Rey that worked suitably. Uh, it cost probably over a half a million dollars to use that location instead of the one we had been at, but it was for the executive's peace of mind. It's this business. It's kind of crazy. Anything else? <laughs>